Hello everyone, today I wanted to share my experience with an SSD enclosure uh, where you will also need to buy an NVMe SSD separately and why I went with it instead of an external SSD. If you want to buy an external SSD, you have two main options, uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro and Samsung T7. Both give 10 GB per second of sequential speed and one terabyte version of both comes around 11,000 Indian rupees or maybe 10,000 if you buy them at a discount. But if you have to go with a custom DIV build, uh, you firstly have to buy a NVMe SSD. I had these three options. All of them gave almost the same sequential speed, but I went with the last one because it had better specs and energy consumption. Then you also have to buy an enclosure. I went with this. Uh, according to comments, I found three cons with this, uh, the loose connection and some people were saying that it heats a lot and also some people were complaining about a very small thermal pad that could not cover the entire SSD. But if those were true or not in my case, we will find that out in this video. First and foremost, why did I want to build a custom DIV SSD in the first place? Uh, the price difference won't be significant between these two options. You might have to pay 2000 more if you build a custom SSD, I guess, uh, but you will have flexibility of buying premium Thunderbolt enclosure in future when the prices of them fall uh, and then you will get full speed of this SSD or you can also use your SSD in your PC build or something like that in future. You won't have this option with an external SSD uh, and you will have to live with your external SSD 10 GB sequential speed for your entire life. So let's unbox and put the pieces together. In the enclosure you get some screws, a screwdriver, USB-C and USB-A cable, a thermal pad and the enclosure itself. And over here you just get the SSD. SSD is smaller than I expected and it is just the size of my middle finger. I discovered that the PCB was loose after opening the enclosure. I hope it will not move after the build is complete. So snap the SSD, put the rubber screw and press tightly, then put the cover back and you have your external SSD ready. Then you have to format it before you can use it. So let me show the sequential speeds on an Intel MacBook. I get pretty good speeds, uh, almost around 900 megabytes on the write and 820 something on read. Now let's do a proper benchmark on a Windows machine using Crystal Disk. I will format the SSD with NTFS file format. One awesome thing is that while you are transferring the data, the LED on SSD will blink and it will not blink when you are not transferring anything. Here are the results of the benchmark. Let's try to do some real world benchmarks. Uh, I'm copying one large file and getting a consistent speed of around 550 megabytes per second. Let's also copy a 1GB folder with 58,000 small files which is a very common scenario if you do programming. And this is the main reason why I wanted SSD. Uh, if I'm using an external hard disk, I will always have to zip the files before copying. Uh, directly copying any such folder will basically be a nightmare. While transferring a folder with many such small files, the SSD controller will become very hot. Uh, the memory also becomes a little hot but it is not that hot. But I think this happens with almost all the SSDs uh, and I bought the Western Digital 750 SE which is supposedly 
which supposedly has better thermals so it was not a big issue for me it took 6 minutes and 50 seconds for this transfer uh, and for comparison like on my laptop when I copied it from one folder to another it took like 5 minutes so I think it is very uh, comparable to uh, inbuilt SSD and due to this I believe that the heating bottleneck was not a significant issue in my case uh, but I will still use a thermal pad let's look at one more benchmark after connecting the SSD with a USB-A cable uh, the sequential speed is around 500 MB per second uh, which is I think uh, the USB 3 bandwidth so this is the maximum that you can get if you use a USB-A cable so now I'm going to install a thermal pad on my SSD since it will extend the life of my SSD by keeping the thermals under control and it will also improve the heat dissipation and also make use of the heat sink that is provided with the enclosure. So uh, how was my experience? Um, in my case thermal pad was not very small as you can see it covered the entire SSD. Uh, and the connection between the uh, like the enclosure and the laptop was also very stable. The cable was very tight and it was not loose at all as like other people were mentioning and it was not disconnecting and the heating issue was also not there yes it uh, does heat a little bit uh, when you are transferring a lot of small files uh, but in my case I think the issue was not as significant as other people were mentioning and it did not bottleneck a lot so thanks for watching this video guys I hope you like it if you do like it then please uh, hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel to see more of such videos in future and thanks once again.